Spurgeon, often as we relay him, comes to us as men. He speaks to us as a man who is used to dealing with men. In our modern day, we find often in society as well as life that many of those who have approached the age of manhood haven't realized within their soul the being that they are and have not come to grips with the fact that they are a man. And that manhood is a process of maturity that rises to the occasion of the circumstances of their life and determines for themselves that they need something more than what life has to offer. They need God. And in that realization of needing God, they come to that perfect understanding that God is who and what he says he is. Within the scriptures we find ourselves often looking at what manhood is as opposed to what the world says men have become. Because when we look at modern societies, societies that dictate what a man may be, then we find that there is great liberality and great assertiveness of the societal norms that dictate to people what they choose to be as we find that we the people have determined for ourselves what we want to be as opposed to what God says to be. And that's why Spurgeon doesn't address necessarily boys, but he talks to us as men. He requites himself to us as a teacher of men. He tells us in the ministry that we ought to be men of God and not children tossed to and fro with every woman doctrine that comes along. And so he tells us and teaches us of doctrines and dogmas, of theology, of teaching, of reality, of who we ought to be in our relationship with God. So when we approach Spurgeon and when we understand what he's saying to our hearts, we are pricked, we are challenged, we are made aware of those places where we need to understand what the Spirit of God <clears throat> may be working in our lives to bring us up into manhood so that we would be the man of God that God wants us to be. He arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights. First Kings 19.8 All strength, all the strength supplied to us by our gracious God is meant for service, not for wantonness or boasting. When the prophet Elijah found the cake baked on the coals and the cruse of water placed at his head as he lay under the juniper tree, he was no gentleman to be gratified with dainty fare that he might stretch himself at his ease, for otherwise he was commissioned to go forty days and forty nights in the strength of it, journeying towards Horeb, the mount of God. When the Master invited the disciples to come and dine with him, after the feast was concluded, he said to Peter, Feed my sheep. Further adding, follow me. Even thus it is with us. We eat the bread of heaven that we may expend our strength in the Master's service. We come to the Passover and eat of the Paschal Lamb with loins girt and staff in hand so as to start off at once when we have satisfied our hunger. Some Christians are for living on Christ but are not so anxious to live for Christ. They want to live about Jesus, but they don't want to live in Jesus. They don't want to do as he says to do. Earth should be a preparation for heaven, and heaven is the place where saints feast most and work most. They sit down at the table of our Lord, and they serve him day and night in his temple. They eat of the heavenly food and render perfect service. Believer, in the strength you daily gain from Jesus, labor for him. Some of us have yet to learn much concerning the design of our Lord in giving us his grace. It is not for our salvation. It is for us to give grace to others. We are not to retain the precious grains of truth as the Egyptian mummy held the wheat for ages without giving it in an opportunity to grow. We must sow it and water it. We must declare it unto the world. Why does the Lord send down the rain upon the thirsty earth and give the genial sunshine? Is it not that those may all help the fruits of the earth to yield food for man? Even so, the Lord feeds and refreshes our souls, that we may afterwards use our renewed strength in the promotion of His glory, for His will to be done, and not our own. 
if it isn't all about us receiving from God and declaring to God that we would choose to follow Him and obey, to prepare ourselves to give out that which we have received, to share and to declare the word of the Lord as God has given it to us, then we have no business to call ourselves ministers, priests, pastors, deacons, elders, servants, or even missionaries, or much less Christian. For is it not that Christ-likeness is what Christian means? And that's why Spurgeon calls to us from the annals of ages past to say to us now today that we ought to take what God has given us and give out that with which we are experiencing in our lives with God. For if it is not of God and with God that we share the word of the Lord, declaring to the nations now that with which God has done, then we fail what Jesus has said in declaring to us to come and follow him. For we are to feed his sheep. We are to preach and teach salvation, to make disciples of all nations. For it is not for our own sake that we have been made saved from the tyranny of the world and declared to be free as Jesus has made us free indeed. Or it's not for our own satisfaction to sit back in our high pulpits you know, and kick back in our office desks and to say, Oh, thank you God for blessing me. But rather it is to take all that we have and to lay it again on the altar of God's mercy and grace and to find ourselves taking up our cross once again to go out unto the world that needs to hear the good news that Jesus has declared to us from the foundations of the world that we would go out and make of those nations disciples that they would follow Jesus of their own accord and not follow men to not follow us, to not build our temples, cathedrals, mega churches, mega ministries but rather to declare unto God that which you've given us, God. Thank you for your word today. Thank you for Spurgeon's word today. Thank you for feeding us. Now we go forward to you, O God, and send us where you would have us to go. For we are not children anymore. But are we not men of God, following hard after what God has said and told us to do? Should it not be that we be ministers and do that which God has declared we should do? according to His will for us, according to His mercy and direction in your life. For me and my wife, we have already made our choice, and it has cost us dearly, and the consequences of our choice are such that we lay down constantly all that we have before the Lord, and we let Him lead and guide us. May it be that you too find in your ministry, as you serve the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your being, that everything you have, everything you are, and everything you will ever be, you are more than willing to every day lay down for the sake of the gospel. That you are willing to give of your heart, of your emotions, of your devotion. As God has fed you, you are so willing to feed others and to minister to their need. For surely they have come to you for such a time as this. And you were chosen to be that man of God for the people of God that need you today.